How's it going, folks? I'm Matt, this is Photos and Take. Welcome to another episode of The Gross Show. So happy you could join us. My pumpkin looks like crap. Let's get into it. All right, so why does this pumpkin look like crap? Well, because in the last uh, about three, four days, we've just had some severe weather rolling through Calgary here. And we had a bunch of rain, we had some hail. Uh, it's, things Things aren't looking great. I mean, this, this thing's looking pretty beat up. I still have to get it into the ground though out front and it should recover, I'm hoping reasonably well. Uh, it is what it is, guys. I, this thing's actually a couple weeks ahead uh, from where I was last year and I still managed to get uh, 70, 79, 79 pounds out of that pumpkin, so uh, that's what What's going on now autos last week i was talking about how i managed to kill off all my auto flowers outside and well we've recovered since so i've got some stuff replanted here and actually here like you can just we've had such bad wind it actually tore apart the hoop house here but um yeah let's just talk about what we got going on here so this is the incorrectly labeled um this is the pluto cut from uh oh who was uh helix helix genetics uh, a gift from wildwood of course good friends over there we've got the wildwood uh this is zam's smile crossed with the cosmic queen uh, i've grown zam's before and it is phenomenal like amazing terps some of the best i've had the Strawberry Mango Crumble from Steal These Seeds. That's coming in pretty good, too. I mean, these are all just babies, right? And uh, the not yet labeled, but I'm just going to put my finger beside it because uh, it's popped out of the ground here. This is actually Gorilla Glue from uh, from ILGM, and that's an auto as well. And I was having troubles with the Super Skunks popping, so I just said the heck with it. We went with uh, some uh, Gorilla Glue because it's always a classic, right? And, and who doesn't love a good Gorilla Glue, although I've never grown it in an auto form. Uh, otherwise, just the rest of the garden here. We've got uh, radishes coming coming in, carrots coming in, my uh, pole beans have started sprouting, just just these four here, it's kind of weird, they're, they're planted all the way along here, and we got squash and squash and squash, I planted peanuts there, where the uh, uh, straw is, but nothing's popped, I just, it's been, been too cool here, I think, my sad looking tomatoes have had the wind kicking the crap out of them, and uh, here we've got spinach, and we've got some kohlrabi, and some baby romaine, and it's all starting to come up, and oh, fun thing over here, guys, uh, I, I don't chill off this area too much, this is my little um, hosta slash fern garden that I put in last year. And what's got me all excited here, and I'm just kind of zoom in. You guys can see, like, uh, right there, and right there, and right there, and right there. All these little baby ferns have started propagating now, um, just on their own. So I'm going to have a lot more ferns in here. Uh, anyway, the outdoors. Let's uh, let's go check in the, uh, uh, the bedroom now, though, and see what's going on in there. All right, inside, here we are in the uh, 4x4 under the uh, TSW 2000. Great light for a space like this. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff going on in here. So uh, we'll talk about these in just a minute. So let's talk about these first. So uh, do -si do and the two runs cuts. I haven't tested the runs out yet. The do -si do is flipping amazing. It's like blueberry ice cream. Uh, down near seven ounces over in a one uh, by two space. Um, you know, basically taking up a quarter of that two by four bed and exceptionally pleased. She squished about average, about a 17, 18%, but the, the terps and, and just the overall uh, yield of the plant itself definitely makes her a keeper. Uh, the runts, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out next week. I just haven't had a chance to press them yet. The good neighbor grow off. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about these because we're going to show you these outside and oh, are they looking fantastic. Hot peppers. We got a Carolina Reaper. We got, or no, sorry, jalapeno, Carolina Reaper, and these are a couple of ghost chilies. So uh, more on that in upcoming episodes. Tobacco. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm growing some tobacco here. You can see uh, there's just a little baby starting to sprout. Uh, that one there in the middle, the back middle, there, there is one little tiny one in the back there, but that's okay. If I only get one of these going, I'll be happy because apparently they'll produce a lot of seeds. Uh, tobacco is excellent for pest prevention and stuff. Uh, I don't smoke cigarettes or anything like that, so I don't plan on consuming it, but Krabby Kush, uh, an absolute A-plus cut. Um, link below to uh, Tim's Instagram. Guys, if you're not familiar, uh, Tim uh, Timothy's uh, Crab Shack fame there, uh, we do a, a live stream now every week over on Living Soil Society. So uh, make sure you check that out. I believe Tim and I are gonna be doing something next week too on the photo channel. A little live stream, a little gardening advice. 
Of course, tucked around in the corner there, if you can see them, I've got some, uh, well, that's the JMO mum, the apple cup mum, and the blueberry, sorry, blackberry kush uh, mum as well. So those, of course, being some of my signature strains and quite fantastic. Now, I just wanted to talk about these two here, right here, the uh, critical mass in the back and the orange dreamer. So a couple weeks ago, you would have seen these things. They were looking pretty yellow. And uh, they're not looking absolutely perfect. They got some uh, not great leaves, but for the most part, they're looking green and they're healthy again. And how did I do that? Well, the last couple weeks, um, instead of um, re-amending with dry amendments, I did a little bit of uh, worm castings in there, but I've also been feeding with this stuff here. I got this Alaska Fish Fertilizer. That's a 511, so heavy in the nitrogen, as well as uh, some soybean aminos from our good friends over at Black Swallow. Shout out if you're in Canada. Check out Black Swallow Living Cells. And then finally, a little bit of humic acid. Of course, this stuff is like magic garden dust. That we recently uh, covered humates over on Living Soil Society. Uh, link up there in the corner if you want to check it out. But what the humates do, uh, among all the other things, is they actually help with the uptake of nitrogen. So as you can see, these plants again, they were looking quite, quite yellow, not very healthy, uh, very hungry. But uh, I brought them back. They're, they're going to get a good default, and then we're going to take them. We'll throw them out in the flower. So why don't we head out to the flower room now, and I'll show you what's going on out there. And it's oh damn good. First and foremost, uh, the empty bed. I just haven't planted it in here yet. The uh, critical mass and orange stream are going in here this weekend. I'm excited. Uh, gonna be a good run, good run. One world, one plant, round two. Well, not really, yeah, it's rerunning the death punch. So, death punch, absolutely love it. This stuff's amazing. Last week we did the rosin report on it. I'm a little shocked though. We didn't really get a lot of views. That, that video wasn't really well viewed. I guess you guys didn't care too much about the rosin report. Yeah, it's fine. I've got the fiberglass trellis net on. I went through here and I did a heavy defoliation uh, last weekend. What I've done here a little bit different with my trellis net though is, I, you can see it's a little random, but I, previously I'd actually been taking and just tying along uh, the edges here with uh, some twist ties. You know, this, this, this standard uh, green stuff here, I'm sure you all have it in your garden space. I realized I didn't have to do it. I just tensioned things. So I kind of ran the back and the front here and I did the side rails. Then I laid a couple horizontally and then I just started weaving. So yeah, this one's kind of sitting funny, but for the most part, they're actually sitting really good. And this thing, it's nicely tensioned. It doesn't move around very easily. And that was the one thing that I didn't like about the, the tie method was they shifted quite easily. So uh, is it perfect? No. Does it work? Hell yeah. Is it reusable? Yes. Without waste, even more so, guys. Ticking all the boxes. And again, death punch kicking butt. So the number two cut, she's getting retired. I'm not going to keep her around. It's going to be a battle between the number one and the number three for a seat in the, uh, in the tent there for the next uh, foreseeable future. Because super wicked, mega, ultra, terpy, delicious and heavy yielder also tastes quite good and punches you in the face like any good death punch should. Just a minute, we'll get to that. <laughs> The, uh, the final run of the doggy breath number two. I've actually taken the number five. Uh, I bucked her up there a couple days ago after it dried for a few weeks. And we've got that sitting uh, in the freezer. I'm gonna do some dry sift on it and see what kind of results I get. Because as a flower, she didn't really press too much. I only got like a couple ounces off them. Um, just little tiny grows. And this one again, it's gonna be a couple ounces. But I'll probably go through and just do a freeze and dry sift again. Because there's not that much. And it's just something fun to play with. Now, I wanna, I'm gonna get up here on my stool. One, because I'm short. But two, because I really want to show you guys what's going on here. Oh, and uh, of course the FCE 8000 growing this grow here. And here we've got the FCE 4800 crushing it. Just crushing it, guys. So, uh, of course, purple, uh, purple turple crossed with great mints by our good friend Wildwood. Of course, Wildwood has been the official autoflower sponsor of the channel for a very long period of time. But he's uh, moved into photos, and guys, the man knows how to breed. These plants are looking beautiful, and they're getting into finishing here. Uh, so we're actually we're day 46 today, and I, I feel like I've got maybe a week left on these plants. So this one here is a GMO uh, Wilson cross. It's got that uh, that very much classic GMO um, f uh, smell to it. It's a very garlicky, very very uh, oniony kind of heavy and whatnot. But the uh, the the turpments that we're calling this here that he's called it. Uh, this is like a sweet grape candy. Um, at least on the one pheno. So the one pheno here in the back, it's coming in. I'm just see if I get a close up on these buds there, guys. Um, I don't know if you can see those really well. Get a little closer, a little closer, a little closer. Zooming in, focusing. 
And I mean, it's just purple from the center out. So just beautiful looking Fino. But what's got me excited, I think, let's move around these lollipops here because I didn't try this at this time, is um, this cut right here. I believe this is the number two. Frosty is all oh, hell. I mean, just like, look at the frost coming in. And that nice color she's fading. Um, we got a little bit of mechanical damage. Just, that's just from wind. I'm not concerned. It happens. But overall, these plants are looking beautiful. So I'm figuring we're probably about a week left. Maybe two on these ladies. And uh, what's going on in place here? I'm not sure yet. Uh, all sorts of fun stuff coming. And guys, I got some unicorn poop. My buddy Rage and up in uh, Edmonton there, he sent me down some unicorn poop. So uh, we're gonna be playing with that here real soon too. Otherwise, that's, uh, that's all we got going on this week. Uh, Giant Pumpkin had the crap kicked out of it. And uh, you know, it should be fine. Otherwise, I am Matt. This is Photosynthetic. Thank you so much for joining us. We are